Hello, hello, my name is Rudra, and if you're like me, you love math. But if you're also like me, then you probably know the feeling of not properly understanding a specific topic and instead resorting to blatantly memorizing facts. More specifically, composite functions were a topic that I genuinely didn't understand at first glance, and it's something I want to do justice. So let's get started. Before we jump into ducks, duck eating dragons, and composite functions, it's important to understand what the word function even means. Imagine a duck. This duck is wonderful, it does amazing things. You give it some seeds and it produces a golden egg. You give it more seeds, it produces more golden eggs. In this case, you can think of the number of seeds as the input, the duck as the function itself, and the golden egg as the output. A function is exactly that. With a function, you give it some input number and it produces an output number. An analogous way to think of functions is that it maps any point on a number line to one and only one other point on the number line. You can extend this definition of a function into the complex plane, but for now, for just for simplicity's sake, we'll stick to all numbers on our real number line. An example of a function is the function f of x is equal to x squared. If you give it some points on the real number line, for example, x equals 2, then the function maps that point to another point on the number line, using that rule. 2 squared gives you 4, and so the point at x equals 2 gets mapped to the number y equals 4. Functions are a special type of relation. A relation is a way to relate points on a number line with each other. You can think of both relations and functions as machines, where you give the machine some input and it produces an output. The only difference between a relation and a function is that for any given input number, a relation can produce one or more output numbers. However, functions only produce one output number for any given input number. For example, Let's graph the relation x squared plus y squared equals 1, with the variable x as our input number. Notice how for each input number, that is for each value of x, there are two output numbers on the graph. This visual test to distinguish between a relation and a function is referred to as the vertical line test. But back to our friendly duck. Unfortunately, our little duck here can only eat a specific number of seeds, and therefore can only produce a certain number of eggs. The possible values for the number of seeds the duck can eat is called the domain of the function. It's the possible values of input numbers we can input into our function. Likewise, the possible values of the number of eggs is referred to as the range of the function. It's the range of output numbers the function can produce. For example, let's suppose we have the function f of x is equal to the natural log of x. What is the possible values of input numbers we can put into this equation? Well, e raised to any power must be greater than zero. So that automatically tells us that x, our input number, must be greater than zero. This is the domain of the function. Now, what's the range of output numbers that can be produced from this log function? Well, let's graph the natural log of x. This is what we get, and as you can see, the range of output numbers this function can produce goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So, how do we write our function? Well, let's take f of x is equal to 1 over x with the domain of the function ranging from 1 to positive infinity as an example. This is how we would write it out. You can see that we start off by defining the name of the function, f. The range of input numbers can be seen here, and what this arrow denotes is the fact that the function maps those input real numbers to some output real number. That's what the R stands for. Finally, after all of that, we define the rule of the function as f of x is equal to 1 over x. If you're into coding, then this notation should seem familiar. You can think of the variable x as a parameter that needs to be filled in for your function. Now, let me introduce you to another function, the dragon. This is a dragon you don't want to mess with. If you give it seeds, it produces red fire. This can also be thought of as a function, with the seeds as the input, the dragon as the function, and the red fire as the output. Let's say I put my duck inside the dragon. This new function I shall call the duckagon. What happens if I give this new function seeds? Well, you notice that the seeds enter the dragon's throat, but they are actually first consumed by the duck. The duck eats the seeds and produces a golden egg. Now, obviously, this is something new for the dragon, but hopefully, if the egg turns out just right, then our dragon will find the egg similar to the seeds it's been eating. 
This is an example of putting a function inside another function. And this is the essence of composite functions. The idea of a composite function is to combine functions together. We do this by substituting one function inside another. We write a composite function like so, where we have some function g of x inside another function f of x. But you might be asking, what if our dragon cannot digest the duck's eggs? Well, then the duckagon cannot exist. The same applies with functions. Remember how the golden egg represents the output of the duck function? Well, if that output number of the duck function is not a valid input number for the dragon, then the composite function can't exist. More formally speaking, if our composite function consisted of an inside function, g of x, inside an outside function, f of x, like so, then the range of g of x must be a subset or equal to the domain of f of x. Let's say we have two functions. The first function is f of x is equal to the natural log of x with the domain from zero to positive infinity. And the second function is g of x, which is x squared minus one. And the domain of g of x is all real numbers. My question to you is, does the function f of g of x exist? And if so, what is the new composite function? Think about this, this is what x squared minus 1 looks like given its domain, which is all real numbers. The range of this function is all the output numbers, or all the possible y values you can derive from this function, which ranges from negative 1 to positive infinity. Notice how this set of numbers is not a subset of the domain of f of x, which ranges from 0 to positive infinity. This means that the composite function doesn't exist. However, if we restricted the range of input numbers for g of x such that x must be greater than 2, notice how this restricts the range of output numbers that are produced from this function. Turns out this new range of the function g of x is in fact a subset of the domain of f of x. Now a composite function does exist. To compute the composite function, we replace x in our function f of x with our entire inside function, g of x. So the composite function becomes the natural log of x squared minus 1. Another question you might be asking is, if I want to keep this duckagon as a pet, which I wouldn't recommend, which food should I give it? Well, the only food it can eat is the food the duck can eat. The duck is the first thing that consumes the food you give it, remember. Same thing applies with composite functions. The input number for a given composite function must be valid for the inside function. In more formal terms, the domain of the entire composite function, the range of input values you can give to the composite function, is the domain of the inside function. Taking our previous example with our composite function, the natural log of x squared minus 1, let's label this new function h of x. What is the range of input numbers we can give to h of x? What is the domain of h of x? Well, it's the domain of our inside function, which turns out to be g of x. The range of input numbers for g of x, remember, we restricted to only numbers greater than 2. That is the domain of our composite function h of x. Finally, what will this new duckagon produce? What is the output of our composite function? Well, this is where many people, including myself, get stuck. But there is a way to conceptualize this, and in this case, it's important to think of functions as a way to map input numbers to output numbers. Our input number, let's say 3, for the composite function is first fed into the inside function, g of x. g of x maps our input number to some output number. This new output number is then fed into our outside function, f of x, which then maps it to a final output. Notice how this is the same as feeding the number 3 into our entire composite function. What if we did this for every single possible input for g of x? Well, we produce every single possible output number for g of x. When we feed all these possible outputs for g of x as the range of inputs for our outside function f of x, we get the possible outputs for f of x given that our input number for f of x is within the range of outputs which g of x can produce. And the possible outputs f of x can produce is all the possible output numbers for the entire composite function. This is the range of the composite function. It's the range of f of x given x is an output number of g of x. 
Now that probably sounds very confusing, but this is exactly why we have an animator. Let's take our previous example with h of x. Remember, h of x is composed of two separate functions, f of x, which is the natural log of x, and g of x. Remember, g of x is equal to x squared minus 1. And recall that we restricted the domain of g of x such that only numbers greater than 2 are considered as possible input numbers. The range of output numbers produced by g of x is from 3 to infinity. Let's see what output numbers are produced by f of x when we restrict the range of input numbers to greater than 3. The output numbers of f of x range from the natural log of 3 to infinity. This is the range of the entire composite function. The range of possible output numbers for h of x is from the natural log of 3 to infinity. And that's composite functions. To summarize, composite functions is the idea of putting one function inside another function. For the composite function to exist, the output numbers produced by the inside function must be a valid input for the outside function. The range of input numbers that can be fed into our new composite function is the domain of our inside function. And the range of the composite function is the range of the outside function given that the input for the outside function is one of the possible output numbers from the inside function.